everyone. Welcome to episode 338 of This Is Whole Life. This is a thanks a special Thanksgiving Day Thanksgiving Day week. Is that how you say it? Or is it this Thanksgiving week? I'm not really sure. The week of Thanksgiving. The week Let's of Thanksgiving. Well, I'll go along with that. Edition of <laughs> This Is Whole Life, your favorite podcast in your feed, I'm sure. No doubt. And if not yours, at least I know somebody. Mariana Parente today stopped me on my way into church. It's Tuesday afternoon. I haven't been having a great day, to be honest with you. Uh, I, have a, I have someone working on a break job at my house who's now not going to be able to finish a job because Randy screwed it up to begin with. And no, not really. It turned out that there was no way I was going to get it done. It is absolutely broken, but someone else is fixing it. But we're being thankful in the midst of things <laughs> that really... I see you're, uh, you paid attention. I did. I did pay go. attention. All right. And because, you know, it was a rise to Thanksgiving. And I'm like, hmm, what do we have to be thankful about? And so, you know, I was expecting a little bit more um, upbeat... But before we go there, rah rah! Finish the Marianne uh, Marianne Parente. Well, well yeah. she just she she motioned me down. She was sitting in the parking lot as I pulled up, already late for being here. <laughs> <laughs> for when Ken and I agreed to be here today because I was waiting for my mobile mechanic to get to my house. I've been, oh, there's a litany of issues. We won't go into all of them for you. But she flagged me down and just said, wanted to let you know that I really, really enjoy the podcast. You do a great job. She was uh, overly kind to myself and to Ken and to Jeff and as the three of us together. And so uh, I'm sure she will also be looking forward to us adding Melanie. Yeah, in that's the, coming uh, up soon. Man, that, that's coming around the She's, corner. She's uh, going to be showing up, I believe, this second Saturday in, in December. December. So I wow. think we should just add her in then. Just add her in then. Well, there's no sense in giving her no. any any break. Just, I mean, get used to this. <laughs> this is your new Tuesday. So anyway, thank you so much. We had a nice little chat, and it it's a nice. It's always nice to hear that people are resonating with not only what we're talking about here at the church, but then in the podcast where we, you know, dig a little bit deeper and you already know all those things, but it's always nice to just hear that what we're doing is making a difference and it's resonating. And last week with Edwin, I'm still, I'm still haven't been able to get that out of my mind. It's been in, he's been in my thoughts nearly every day and multiple times a day, some days. So Edwin, if you're listening, I hope you're having a great week and don't forget to stop by and check out a, uh, a nice drink where we can sit down and get to know each other a little bit better. We keep that invitation out there till I see you. All right. So a rise to Thanksgiving. I thought we were going to be just a little bit more, you know, polishy. Let's put a shine on the year, a little Thanksgiving, <laughs> you know, and you know, like kind of when you sit down, like what, what, um, you're still what, getting what kind to of know me. You're still kind of getting to know me, aren't you? Well, you know, I, I, I never know for sure. I mean, because sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that'd be about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then this time it was like, mm, no, I, it's not where I expected it to go. But it was good. Came in from a different direction. We came in from a different direction. And the thing that you really, he said, he said in his, <laughs> write down 10 horrible Horrible, horrible things that have happened yeah. to you this year. So uh, the one question I had, uh, why horrible? Why not, uh, you know, something unsavory, maybe something uncomfortable, but horrible. Well, because for those who uh, <laughs> listen, I wanted it to be something. I don't want to be something because in a minute, I would, you know, near the end of the sermon, I'm going to ask you to go back and see if you can thank, find anything to be thankful for through those. Yeah. And if it was, uh, you know, tepid, it's like that's a little easier. But if it's horrible, <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to think a little bit on that you're one. Have so, to dig. Yes, that's why horrible. <laughs> it was it was kind of a nasty sucker punch, really, to be quite honest with you, wasn't it? Well, and then it was like we're just gonna go ahead and give you a couple of minutes to do this, and then okay, now that you've written them down, we're just gonna have closing prayer, and we're that that's gonna do it. There you thank go. You, thank you for coming. And I was like, if he pulls that off. <laughs> It's going to be the shortest Ken sermon so far. And he's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, no, I don't think he would do that. But the one thing, and I, and I was talking to Marianne about this as well, and it both both of us really were struck the same way when you brought out 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And, you know, I mean, all. There's really not a lot of wiggle room in all means that, you know, pretty much we just have to 
include everything, and including our list of 10 or our ongoing list of hundreds or thousands collectively, depending how long you've been on the planet. And that just seems to be, at first glance, I mean, I think we've all heard that. If you're a Christian, you've been a Christian for any amount of time, we've all heard that verse a ton of times. But I never really stopped to think about all circumstances. I mean, all circumstances Including sounds fun. Horrible. horrible. <laughs> I mean, all all is inclusive. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand what the word means, but I don't think we apply it that way because it's, is it just because we're uncomfortable thinking? Is it subconscious? Like, oh, no, 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 no. He couldn't possibly mean all. <laughs> he just means like, well, yeah, sometimes things aren't great. We should still do it. But do we really have to do it in the, in the list of 10? Yeah. Hey, I thought that's what you were going to say because you're backing up what you said on Saturday. So there's there's really no wiggle room in that. But then where do we find, like, okay, you got this verse and it's all circumstances. Is there another verse that tells you like, oh, here's how you turn the dial six degrees on a warm, sunny day. And when you push it into the wall, it's going to reveal this other verse that's going to go, well, this is how you deal with the 10 as being part of the all and being thankful. <laughs> is, there, is there an opposing? I think, it's, I think it's important to know that the verse doesn't read, be thankful about all circumstances. Mm, okay. And and I don't think that the verse is implying that we have to be thankful about horrible circumstances. I think what it's implying is that if we are in Christ, even in the most horrible circumstances, we can find reasons to be thankful, to have an an attitude towards God, hmm. okay, of thanksgiving and gratitude. So we're not really grateful that you know we bungled that <clears throat> break job that's going to cost us a ton of money. We have to be thankful that we did it, or uh, that. Be thankful we... that you have a mechanic that can solve your <laughs> your mistakes, <laughs> uh, or that you have somebody that you know. I mean, there's. <laughs> Look, I. What I would say is be very careful when you share this verse with people. This is for you, not for someone else. And what I mean by that is when somebody is going through, you know, what I did not say to Randy when he walked in here today was, Randy, come on, be <laughs> thankful for what, what's going wrong with your motorcycle right now. I didn't say that, and I didn't read this verse to him. This is a verse for Randy to to apply when he is in an emotional state where he, where he's ready for that. But... But I think, I mean, don't be a jerk. Don't mm. go walk up to somebody who's just lost somebody they love, who's going through a divorce, who's, uh, um, you know, going through bankruptcy, and say, "Hey, should be thankful." You know, the Bible says, "Be thankful in all circumstances." So, where's the where's the good stuff going on right now? You got to let's let's focus on that. Um, that's a good way to to you know yeah. wind up with people not liking you very well. Uh, the point, though, is for those of us who are in Christ to remind ourselves that when we are in those circumstances, that there are glimmers of light, that there are things that we can be grateful for. And the more of those that we're able to focus on and turn our attention toward, the, the more we're able to walk through those circumstances with the strength that we need to get through them. Um, if, if all we do is focus on how horrible things are, then then life gets pretty dark and pretty yeah. grim pretty quick. But if we can see the little glimmers of light, not that we're thankful that it's happening, but to see the people around us that that are there to to comfort us and be there for us, the the people who um, that look out for us at times, if we can see that, you know, this brokenness led to healing yeah. um, and led to something, those are all things that we can look for and and see uh, what well, a friend, what well, somebody told me a long time, where God winks, where where God <laughs> winks at you a little bit, and and you know that God is is there with you. So, I think it's a, it's a discipline like anything else. I think the more you, I think when you first start trying to do it, it's very difficult and very hard. But the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. The more, the better you get at it, um, the more resilient I think you're going to find yourself. You know, as I was thinking about. Thinking about that and then having this break situation come up, which I didn't know uh, we were going to have the issue. Well, I guess I did on Saturday, but I wasn't thinking about it. And so 
our second vehicle is a, is a truck. And so all four of us can't get in the truck. So we immediately started planning like, okay, how are we going to get everybody shuttle around from here to there? Dad can ride the motorcycle as long as it's not pouring rain, please. Um, <laughs> you know, things like that. And I thought back to the last time that I actually did the brakes on this vehicle. Heather and the girls were headed to Wisconsin and they're ready to go. I'm like, ah, how long can it take to change pads and rotors? You know, disc brakes are pretty typically a pretty easy, maybe, you know, for someone who doesn't do it every single day, two or three hours, right? It's not okay. a big deal. Jack up the car, not a big deal. I've done hundreds of brake jobs in my life. It was a two and a half day job, mm. which tensions are running high. Heather's upset at the situation, not necessarily at me, but like I'm doing my best and like I've never, never seen brakes like this in my entire life and it no, nothing goes well. And when I went back to the store to bring back the tools that I had to rent to actually pull this off, the guy behind the counter was like, you got to trust that God had a reason for you to not get this brake job done when you wanted to. And I just, I thought that was really odd. And it really felt like a moment where God was just saying, listen, there was a reason that this didn't happen the way you thought it should, when you thought it should, how you thought it should. It could be that your mechanic was desperately needing the money. <laughs> For, for Christmas. So there you go. So, you know, and at that point I was like, well, so that's like five years ago. And I'm just like, well, wowzers. And then you feel bad because through the whole thing, it's just so frustrating. And you just, you know, I, I don't have patience. And that just, it's like a test beyond test. And then this one, I was like, I, I, now I know what tool I need. I know how to get this done. No problem. And now it just seems like uh, one of the... One of the calipers is actually bad, and that was the reason why. So it wasn't just me, but now I'm going like I am very thankful that for whatever reason I felt like the last time maybe maybe my family was spared some kind of tragedy mm. because of it. And this time, like you said, maybe Pedro could use a couple extra bucks for Christmas this year, and I am so happy that his mechanic service is, goes beyond motorcycles, includes cars for special people like me. And also has mobile services because I can't take the car there. So yeah. having all that line up and you think, yeah. you know what? I am kind of, I'm not happy it happened. Okay. Yeah. But I'm also happy that there are ways around it. There are ways yeah. to get it fixed and we can all move on with our lives. So this one really kind of came in a, in a great time for me. But I also wanted to tell you that I appreciated just more than you know, and I, I think a lot of people did, you sharing the story of your dad being sick and obviously that impacted you and you choked up a little bit when you said, I love my dad yeah. and it made me choke up. It made me think about my dad who has had just been here for the week with my brother and how much I love them and, and I miss them when they're not around and how much, if you just look at that and say, maybe all this also keeps us in a good frame of mind when bad things happen to go, remember what's important. Remember what you should be doing. Remember who you should be praying for, who you should be making sure they know they love you. And, uh, you know, what started out as just on the outside is maybe a negative. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful things in there when you start to turn that around and think about how mm -hmm. gratitude has played such a big role in our lives and we've done it right. And when you look at those times when you were grateful and you go, ooh, Man, I had a good, you know, you you did, you find that your good runs, to me, my good runs have come when you're grateful for things, you're not taking things for granted, you're not upset about everything, and you just go, wow, I woke up today. I mean, maybe that's the most overlooked thing we can do, but <laughs> God gave me another yeah. day of life today and brought experiences into my life, and we, we discount even just family time. Man, I had, I had a great day yesterday with my family. We were together. We were working on projects together, getting stuff done. And it was like, wow, at the end of the day, that was great. It was just a day. We didn't do anything spectacular. We stayed at home and worked. But it was a really good day with the family. Mm. So find those in everything that you do because yeah. I think that's the part that really goes, really goes unnoticed. And this was a unique way to bring it about. I didn't have I didn't have that much problem finding 10, though, for this year. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. Uh, my I mind, had somebody tell me that they— <laughs> 
that their child was complaining that they had 10 from this last so week. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. So anyway, I, I just hope that everyone else really, you know, let this one uh, sink in. And this would be a great discussion over Thanksgiving dinner if there's, you know, if you're if you're going somewhere where maybe someone hasn't heard the message or, you know, they haven't maybe thought about it this way because Mariana and I both were like, never thought about it that way before in our little parking lot conversation. So maybe others haven't either. And it's a good way to just peek that, oh yeah, I need to be reminded. So, all right, let's hit the questions. All right. I'm loving that people are starting to get creative with anonymous. (laughs) This is anonymous. 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 So you know who you are. Can and their a question is Ken? Is there an appropriate time to discuss unfortunate events during family Thanksgiving? Should this be done, or keep Thanksgiving cheerful and light? And <laughs> I think we just I think I think the message proves that you don't always have to keep it yeah. cheerful and light. I think uh, <laughs> I would I would uh, I would read the room <laughs> and decide whether it's uh, the right but, time or not. You know, uh, if everybody's really happy and, you know, you're having good conversation, might not want to be like, so <laughs> let's talk about 10 horrible things. But you know what? Yeah, I think that there's, you know, it depends on your family, depends on the situation you're in. But like I said, read the room. And I think that there's definitely a time for serious conversations over family, family time and Thanksgivings and uh, at Thanksgiving and other holidays. And but uh, there's the right time, the right place. So uh, maybe Friday, if everyone's hanging around, yeah, like yeah. let let Thursday be Thursday, right? Let Thanksgiving, yeah. you know. Or if you know, if your family does, you know, if you are in a serious conversation, I think you can. Oh. you know, like I said, it might be the right time to do it, but you know, might not be the time to break it out when you're. You know, uncle's watching his favorite football team yeah. play, and you know, you're like, and, stress is already high. Yeah. And they lose, and you're like, so, is this one of the top 10 horrible things that's happened to you this, this week? Year? Here's a pen and paper. Let's write these down. <laughs> Which, uh, by the way, uh, much sadness uh, for all of my Argentine, our Argentinian friends who uh, t- team just lost uh, oh, a World game Cup. to this to Saudi Arabia. Wow. Sorry about so that. that. That That'll definitely make uh, their an, top 10 list. Is that an upset? Huge. Okay. Maybe I mean, one of the biggest ever in the, in the World Cup. So anyway... Sorry for slipping that in. Now we'll, we'll move on to the next question. What I know about soccer, I've learned from Ted Lasso. So whatever oh, that wow. means. So okay. I, that's all I know. Okay. okay. So well, just don't judge. And just to, I guess you'll have to. Just a kid from, just a kid from Wisconsin where the only there's, thing that matters other, is Green YouTube, Bay Packers football. YouTube videos to help explain if you need more. I don't get the, like, the extended play. Let's add time to the game. I don't like that. See, oh, come on. I don't like that. No, but that's, that's – okay, so – Because that's just like someone oh, – that's just somebody oh totally just being able to just change the outcome. Like, oh, no. let's just add 10 minutes. Okay, see, but that's – no. But they don't uh, – okay. No. no I don't, that's, that's all not, I know. No. No. Should we not ta- do we, Should we not go into this? I'm just trying – I'm trying to figure out whether I need to help your education further. And uh, you probably do. And, you know, but – Should we have a conversation but over the, lunch? But the nice thing – so the nice thing is this, the, the time runs. Like, you're not stopping the time every – 30 seconds for this, that, or another. The time runs consistently throughout the whole match. So you're not stopping the clock very often for anything. And so what happens is they they make up for that time at the end they of the game. They guesstimate. Eh, well, I mean, is there, I mean, is there a there, Yeah, there is. There's, there's a certain amount of stoppage time that they generally, and yes, it is up to the referee to decide. But, uh, seems but, but weird. if you're, but if you play, if you play football, if you play soccer, you know that. You yeah, know that's it's how it, it's part of the game, okay. and you know that you've you've got to play it to the end until that whistle goes, and it is what it is. All right. Yeah. Maybe we need to do a special edition just on being that we're in FIFA World Cup and all this stuff. I said that right. FIFA. FIFA. Right? FIFA is it? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. See, uh, there you go. That shows you the depth and breadth of what I know. Manchester. What's the United. next question, Randy? What's the next question? Well, uh, <laughs> I, did, I didn't mean to to rabbit us. So uh, there we go. Uh, or we're, squirrel. We're, we're alone again, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> we are. No Jeff here to keep us on track. <laughs> All right. Now this one is from anonymous. Okay, this is anonymous, and not this, anonymous. Not anonymous. This is anonymous. Okay. This is lowercase a anonymous. I don't think okay. there might be one more. Okay. So anonymous, how do you not be bitter in the middle of awful? and pain i know to be grateful but sometimes it's hard yep gratitude is the probably the trying to find the positives is one of the ways to try to fight off bitterness Mm. but let's also understand that there are some times when life comes along and bitterness happens yeah 
And I believe it's Hebrews that talks about watching out to not allow the root of bitterness to grow. Mm. And and so what I would say is it's not unnatural for bitterness to show up in your life, but uh, do your best to not let it grow because it, it usually winds up poisoning you more than it poisoning anyone else. For me, it's been just looking at the very, very little things. And sometimes it's looking at someone else's misfortune that, I mean, it may not be a huge thing, but wow, that, that I bet that really hurt or that, man, that stinks. And then looking at my life, and going, oh man, the little thing that I was so upset about the other day doesn't even compare to this. And not always just looking for others, but just, but that helps you to start identifying things in your life, at least for, for me it has, to say, man, that could have been a whole lot worse. Or, wow, God really has blessed me in this way. And yeah. that helps to try to be conscious of yeah. looking for things to be grateful for every day. And sometimes it's just okay to say that was awful. Yeah, well, that's it was true. horrible and <laughs> it was no good. Yeah. And I'm not happy that it happened and I don't think God's happy that it happened. And now I'm going to have to find a way to not allow that to define me. Does God let it happen so that we can learn to be grateful or that we can learn a lesson? Is that a, a fair assessment or is it just one of those things we we can't really know for sure, but we just know that God loves us no matter what happens. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I cling to. There's, uh, you know, the Bible makes it pretty plain that there are places where God does allow some pretty horrible things to happen, and there's yeah. other t- places where it doesn't appear that that was something that God wanted, but happened anyway. But it happened, and um, and so I've tried to, sp- I, you know, I don't know. I try to spend a little less time trying to figure out. The why. The why in a little bit more time focusing on the fact that the Romans 8, 35 through 39 is true, that nothing can separate me That's from God's okay. love. It's mm. a good one, too. That's a good one, too. All right. Uh, this one is from Ola. What I have learned is that we are righteous children of God through the blood of our Jesus. We are in victory. Thank you, Jesus. So when I'm challenged, I remember this and straighten the crown Jesus gave me. I thought that That's was beautiful. I thought that was really just a, a a really good way to look at it different. I've never seen it worded quite that way, and, and it brought a smile to my face yeah. then, and it just did now. So thank you, Olaf, for that for that comment. All right, now we're at anonym, anonymous capital A hyphen one anonymous one. Okay. Hello. How Hi. can we be thankful? When the church has hurt your child, mm. when the pastors have rejected your child. And I'm so sorry, first off, yeah. that that has happened to anyone in a church and where a pastor would would reject your child. Oof. Yeah. When it comes to our kids, is it? I think that makes it even more difficult to yeah. find that, to find gratitude, because that one seems pretty dark. Yeah, it does. So read the first part of it again. The first part was, how can one be thankful when the church has hurt your child? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you on that one. Um, That's hard, and I'm sorry that you've gone through that, and I'm sorry maybe you're going through that. I, I wouldn't presume to tell you how you should be grateful about that. What I would tell you is that that unfortunately people are all too human, and that includes those of us who are pastors, and uh, we're imperfect. Um, sometimes when you share what's happened, it will help the other person know how to say sorry and make amends. Um, sometimes you don't get that satisfaction from someone. So what I would say in that situation is, is I don't, I don't know how to tell you how to how to deal with that aside from taking it to God and asking him to show you yeah. where you can find uh, peace and, uh, and hopefully help God find you a way through that difficulty and, and, a, and a way for your child also to, to find peace with God mm. yeah. and, and their Christian community. I saved these two just because they were really tough and I wanted to put them in the middle and hopefully have a little a little shiny on either side. But Trafina asked, can we discredit our children's horrible experiences? And I'm not sure what those experiences are, but again, it, it it's a reminder that our kids 
need us to to show them can one we, how to do so those. So can we discredit our kids' horrible experiences? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can. I think a lot of times in life we uh, are very uncomfortable with pain and we're very uncomfortable with other people who are suffering and we like to tell them, hey, the Bible says to be thankful in all circumstances, so quit quit bringing me down with your sadness and your hurt. And I think we can do that as parents. We can tell our children the ones that, when they've gone through a difficult experience, well, you know, it's not as bad as you think. We can minimize I think we need to be careful not to minimize. You know, when somebody goes mm. through a difficult time, it's not the time to yeah. tell them, well, you need you just need to change your attitude around. Sometimes it's time just to wrap your arms around them, love them, and and be there for them. So I think we need to be careful not to discredit people's feelings and our children's for sure and, and others as well. Not to say, hey, oh, you shouldn't feel angry, oh, you shouldn't feel bitter, oh, you shouldn't feel you know, we feel what we feel, you know. If yeah. somebody pounds your toe with a with a hammer, you can say you shouldn't your your toe shouldn't hurt, but that doesn't change the fact that it does. So you know why why do we think that we wouldn't feel loss and hurt and emotional uh, pain when when bad things happen? And and to tell somebody just to blow that off doesn't doesn't really help anything. So I think we need to be sensitive to that and and not discredit the things that people are going through. And not for me, it's it's and not projecting on people what we would feel, right? Because that's an easy one to fall into. Well, yeah. oh, I've had that happen before. That's not that bad. Yeah. Or you know, that's pff, no, no, no. And it it just ends up being where you you really make yourself look not very good, because instead of just being empathetic and going, look, you, like you said, you feel like you feel, and and I'm I'm here to at least offer you a, a, some love and some sp- support and make sure that you realize you're hurt and that somebody cares in- instead of trying to <laughs> minimize. Yeah. I-, I just thought this was a, a great comment. This is from Anna. She said, I got to hear John Piper speak in person a few years ago. And the one thing that always stuck with me was this. He said, we all get to spend an eternity praising God, but earth is the only place we still get to do it in the face of suffering. And I thought that was kind of a cool idea to think of that we're all here. We're all in the same boat. We're all sinners. We're all going to go through suffering. And so this is just for a time. And I don't know if any of y'all went to see The Chosen in the theater yet. Uh, Season three is out. uh, Just episodes one and two, they premiered them. And I think it's still this whole week, I think, in theaters or maybe a little bit longer. And we went to see it. And wow. Wow. Uh, there's I'm not going to spoil it. I was going to go there and spoil it, yeah, but don't do it. I'm not going to do it, but just remember when you go see that earth is the only place we will get to do it in the face of suffering. And Jesus has an amazing exchange with one of the disciples about suffering while you're here. And if it doesn't bring tears to your eyes, I don't think you have a soul. There was not a dry eye in there, and it just made me think of it. But I won't ruin it for you who it is and when it happens or which episode. Uh, but uh, look for that when it comes out. I believe it was episode two. Hmm. All right. And Ahola also said, I thank God that he placed a very humbling man as our pastor. And I agree. And I'm also. I'm also. <laughs> that's nice. I'm also that's, a, that's a nice that's compliment. Kind. I think that's it. That's the last of our comments. But the one thing I wanted to leave you guys with this week was every week we have some really good whole life reflections. But this was too, I thought, you know, we all have at least a little bit extra time this week and hopefully a little bit with family. And our first reflection was, who in your life are you grateful for that has never heard you express your gratitude for them? Make the time this week to tell them. I immediately popped into my head and went, man, did I ever... Have I ever verbally said that to this person? And I, I'm guessing I probably haven't. Maybe in, maybe in certain words or or feelings or thought processes, but I don't know about the words of. I'm grateful for you, because of this, that, or whatever it was that you did. And I don't know if I've ever said that. And that that was a that to me that's something I am definitely going to do. And the second one was think back to a few of the most painful experiences in your life. Can you find anything in those experiences to be grateful about? What are some of the things that you're grateful for that you haven't thanked God for recently? And make the time to do that today. And I thought, man, those those are two things that are pretty easy that if you sit down during just your time with God and wondering, you know, sometimes it's hard. You read another, you know, couple of verses, maybe you're on a, a Bible plan, and sometimes that just feels routine. But I thought these were two good things that we could do, maybe even over 
maybe over lunch if it's appropriate with mm. your family and uh, have everyone go around and, and, and do something like that. Because, again, there's no better time to think about gratitude than Thanksgiving for me. And Thanksgiving is absolutely 100 percent my favorite time of the year. It's my favorite holiday. Ooh, nothing like a good apple pie and a good piece of, mm. you know, Ellie makes French silk I pie. I like apple crisp. Apple crisp. Mm, that's mm. my favorite, yeah. I do. That's why well, I, I wouldn't turn down apple crisp either. And then a good pumpkin. You got to have a piece of pumpkin pie. Even if it, that pumpkin pie is not my favorite, but it's just something about it. Like, okay, now it's time. There's something about Thanksgiving, right? Pumpkin something about pie, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So what are we doing next week? Are we starting a new series? Are we... We uh, are. You're preaching. I'm right? preaching. I think. Yeah, saw, we're starting remember. our Christmas series a little early. Um, well, I oh, guess it's okay. not really that early. It's after Thanksgiving. So, but we're starting. It's a rise to Christmas, and we're talking about different characters in the Christmas story Ooh. who were given the opportunity to arise. Some of Ooh. them arose well, and some of them failed to arise, and others uh, went in the opposite direction. So we've we've got Elizabeth and uh, Zachariah, the Ooh, parents okay. of John. Yep. The Baptist, and then we have that. That's this coming Saturday, and then we have Herod. We have the innkeeper. We have mm. um, the Magi, and I think we have one other. I can't remember the other one. So, but well, that's, off the, that's not too bad. Who, yeah, who are just, we talking about this week? Do you know uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah? Elizabeth We're and talking Zachary. about a rising to hope Ooh. during the Christmas season because it's easy um, to let go of hope. And you and almost have to have gratitude before you can have almost, hope. Almost. Right? Yeah. I think those two kind of go together. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think it'll flow out nicely. It's going to flow we'll out nicely. Okay. And so, that, so yeah. That so us- that's, that's, that happened. And you know what, Randy? I, I wanted, I did want to say a quick word of thanks to John Monday. Mm, yes. And all the ton of great people who um, volunteered, helped out, made our uh, barn party. A huge success. If you weren't there, man, it was my first one to go. It was incredible. It was amazing. <laughs> Ton of fun. It was a little disappointing because I didn't, you know, I didn't even place with the children. So that was a little. You so know, but <laughs> John came in second. So clearly, was he second? He was second. Okay, because I know it was Edgar that won. Edgar won um, first place. Yes, and that wasn't real. I mean, it wasn't a surprise to me that right. his chili could have won because right. he's pretty amazing. Pretty cook. good, yeah. yeah. And but Kyla was a little like, overexcited that you didn't play. So you I was know, like, it's a little hurtful when your children are, I know. Uh, you know, rooting <laughs> against you. So. I want to make her eat a pot of my chili before this week is over. So and, there you and, go. And Carla and Daniel, I mean, did they? Did you send them any? You didn't. And they, you the know, bo- well, why it, would I send them any? Apparently, they need more salt for it or something. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's what got me. Maybe I, maybe they have like the prophetic gift, and I didn't realize. And it. And you didn't realize it, so maybe you should talk to them in private and figure out maybe what that was. What? So you don't give away any tips for anybody else for yeah, next year. Something like that. Hmm. It was though. It, it was, was a good time. We we think that there are somewhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand people that came through. That's awesome. And yeah. there were a ton of a ton of new faces that yeah. I hadn't seen there before. I know we invited some friends yeah. that we had just met through Champions Prep Academy, yeah. where Ellie goes one day a week, and I know other people that brought guests. And it was really cool getting to meet new people who yep. are just kind of standing around looking, and it was like, "Hey, how's it going?" And yep. I'm so and so, and it's like, oh, cool. Yep. And then some of our old friends from Forest Lake, I've I saw here, and cool. other churches, and so it was glad to see that uh, nobody yeah. felt like they weren't welcome because everybody well is. Yeah, come on party. out. All right. Plenty of chili, plenty of cookies, plenty of hot dogs and buns. Mm. Yeah, that was. There's something about when it's brisk and cool out, and there's mm. a little chilly. That was a Friday night tradition. I'll tell you how good, how good was God to us that we had it. I just, I mean, the weather was perfect, and then the next day it was not perfect, and so, man, God was so kind to hold off that weather and just give us a great evening, and it was perfect uh, for being outside. It was wonderful. So, again, thank you to Mariana, and, you know, she expressed, she's like, man, I really wish sometimes I could, when you answer, you've answered my questions before, and then I have rebuttal. Please send the rebuttal. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll go back to the next one. And if we're if we're if we're on a topic and we, you know, there's something that you feel like, hey, I have one more to go on that. You know, send them in. And always 407-965-1607 podcast at wholelife.church. And we'll answer your questions and make sure that we catch them each and every week. And even if it's a later one, just throw it in. We, we, we'll we make time for questions because more and more I hear from people that are like, the best thing we ever did was to begin answering the questions that didn't get answered after the message. Yeah. And 
and uh, to have your voice heard. And so, and voicemails are fun too. Go ahead and leave the voicemail. If it's yeah. easier to explain, I'm happy to put those in. That's an easy process for us here. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Yep. And uh, we're jumping into Christmas because now you it's and your time. Family have a great Thanksgiving. We love you bunch. Hope you uh, hope you just have a, a wonderful time with your family. Well, we're going to be, someone's riding in the back of the truck for Thanksgiving, uh, looks like for me. So someone's going to have to put on a heavier <laughs> jacket, but you know. Good thing the, we live in Florida. <laughs> good thing we live in Florida. So I'm finding the, see, I'm, I'm still finding the positive. Ken. There it see, is. see how effective this it was? It won't be you riding in the back, right? <laughs> Uh, someone else, someone else will probably appreciate being in the back more than me. I will say, go. I will at least say that much. But Dad'll ride in the back; he doesn't care. So that's going to do it for this week. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Next time we see you, we're going to start talking Christmas. Can it possibly mm-hmm. be that time? And oh, by the way, if you left a chicken in the studio, at least let me know what I'm supposed to name this thing. Okay? Hmm. Check out social media. It's I'll a rooster. Sell. Is it a rooster? It's a rooster. Not a chicken. I mean, roosters are chickens, but it's also... Yeah, he's got the... By the yeah. Tr- yeah, it's yeah. a rooster. All right, well, if it's your rooster, thank you. I, I'm look, we were kind of looking for a mascot anyway, and I will find a good place to keep him here if, you know, if you're willing to let him stay. So let me know what I'm supposed to name him. And we will see you all again next week. 